in the US from Peru uh, to celebrate the publication of my new book which is called San Pedro Huachuma Opening the Pathways of the Heart uh, just recently out on the shelves but most importantly I'm here to uh, raise awareness uh, about sustaining uh, a culture of safety in plant medicine circles as these medicines both ayahuasca and San Pedro and, and others uh, are calling more and more people uh, to engage with them the rising numbers make it so that uh, plant medicine uh, becomes an, also a matter of public safety and public health and it's important as far as I'm concerned uh, to that we all uh, co-create this safety so that uh, the authorities do not feel forced to implement uh, measures to prevent people from accessing these medicines in the same way that they did in the 60s with uh, LSD The, um, an important thing is that plant medicines support us not only in healing our wounds uh, but they support us in growing up growing up as responsible individuals taking responsibility for our own experience and in that vein it's um, it feels important for me that we let go of the attitude of delegating such responsibility to uh, ceremony leaders or ceremony hosts that take responsibility for the safety uh, of ourselves and the ceremonies that we participate in ourselves ceremonies plant medicine ceremonies are circles and a circle is made of each point in that circle the strength of the circle is determined by every point that is part of that circle so as individual points in that circle if we all take responsibility uh, then we co-create we co-create the strength of that circle and we co-create safety the the message to the Hopi elders that most of us are familiar with also mention that it is time for us to stop looking outside ourselves for a leader and that we step into that leadership ourselves and when we all do then we create a strong strong circle a strong community which benefits 
us as well as our communities and that is also a very powerful practice that extends into our communities and the planet as a whole. Now as part of that co-creation of safety um, I have in this book uh, written a couple of uh, chapters that speak about the challenges first of all of engaging in a process in a spiritual practice that is foreign to us as Westerners it's a chapter that was inspired by the Colombian movie Embrace of the Serpent which I believe is a very very important uh, movie. In that movie there are two characters. One is European, the other one is an American. And the movie illustrates the many many mistakes misconceptions that we as foreigners as Westerners are prone to falling into whenever we engage in a different culture in the movie repeatedly these two characters are invited as they go deeper into the jungle one of them seeking healing the other one seeking uh, plants they're repeatedly invited to let go of their baggage they go to the jungle and they have all these instruments and suitcases and the shaman who is leading them is like throw it in the river we're not gonna make it we're actually gonna drown the boat is gonna sink now this is an illustration of not only our attachment to physical objects but also speaks about the importance of letting go of our mental baggage of our assumptions as Westerners and to engage in this process with plant medicine with an open mind and with respect respect for a culture ways that we come knocking we come knocking at their door seeking something seeking healing seeking wisdom we come as guests and as soon as we cross the door we start creating our own house rules oh you know this should be done this way that stuff you know an easy example oh all that purging on ayahuasca is so uncomfortable you know can we just avoid this can we tweak the medicine so that I don't have to go through this uncomfortable part of the process in our often unconscious westerly ways we are always seeking efficiency we're always seeking for efficacy the best way to get to where we want in as rapid and as comfortable way as possible and as 
novices, really, this is a whole new world for us. We were like, you know, within a couple of days, I was like, no, but this could be done like this and that, and, you know, like, like we own the house, that we are truly only the guests thereof. So, first of all, I stress once again the importance of a respectful, humble attitude to remind ourselves that we are guests. And when we stay in that humble, attitude, when we let go of our own expectations, then we can open ourselves to receiving truly what this process, what this culture has to offer us. When uh, I went to Iquitos in 2005 to uh, make yourself comfortable, come, have a seat. Um, I went to Iquitos to find out whether my idea uh, of studying plant medicine was a serious one. I stayed for the first month in a very small campment outside the city of Iquitos, guest of uh, three generations of a family of Shipibo people. And the first ayahuasca ceremony was just me and the ayahuasquero, an old man. And there were a couple of family members sleeping in the same room and he was sitting a certain distance from me kept started singing Allah. and then at some point he came and sat right in front of me and sang directly to me and in that moment I thought Javier everything you know or you think you know is useless here is actually a hindrance let it go let it go so that you can actually receive what you came looking for my teacher don francisco montes is fond of telling everybody that the science of plant medicine is a science that never ends. Which means there's always something to learn, something to discover. But in uh, very recent years, I've taken this line also to mean that to keep that humility of, of a student is what allows us to truly learn and grow and evolve. If I hold on to the belief I know, that belief is actually very limiting it prevents us from opening ourselves to more knowledge and wisdom and information. So in the same way that uh, I had, I had a, a in my last retreat, there was a woman who came 
uh, she actually had to let go of about 10 important medications that she was on in order to come to the retreat, among them sleeping pills, antidepressants, anti-anxiety. And the very last email, the day before she flew down to Peru, she writes me this email. And she's like, I went online, I read things about ayahuasca. I don't want to see any visions. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, after our first meeting, I took her aside and I said, Dear, when you go to the doctor, you do exactly as the doctor says, right? Yes, yes. This is the same thing. Plant medicines, you know, we call them, we call them master plants, we call them grandfathers, grandmothers. Hello. Because of their wisdom. And yes, I agree that this process with plant medicines is completely mysterious. It's as mysterious as life. It's a mystery that um, that the rational mind cannot put into an equation that makes sense. In the same way that we'll never be able to write down an equation for life. The mind cannot grasp and put into a coherent set the vastness and the mystery of who we are and of what life is. And that can be challenging for us with our own need to understand rationally, to make sense of things. So when we engage in this process, this is a big challenge. I don't know what's happening. I don't understand it. But these are wise medicines. And it is for us to trust their wisdom because it is their wisdom that has called us to them in the first place. This is part of a greater process of surrender. Plant medicines ask us to surrender to them, to let go of our own uh, defense mechanisms, our control mechanisms, of our shields, so that they can be with us. That surrender is a big, big challenge for most of us. And in my own experience, I have encountered many many layers of surrender and in between each layer of surrender there was a thick layer of resistance mm -hmm. ultimately the process of surrender that we are invited into 
is not a surrender to the medicine is a surrendering to our own selves to give ourselves the permission to rest within our own selves without any strategies without any doing and without any resistance when I had my first important experience of what I can only call self-realization and it was under the effects of San Pedro that experience of self-realization was simply the result of surrendering all of my fighting and in that fighting was also the perceived need to fix myself to improve myself to be something other than myself and when I finally dropped all that then I could rest within myself and in that resting within myself there was nothing to do except rejoice in myself In this process, we meet over and over levels of resistance that we're not even aware of. And it's sweet how we go a certain way and we're like, okay well you know I'm done I'm cool I'm cool I'm done <laughs> and then before we know it oh oh there's another mountain to climb with wild animals and whatnot we have a knack for denial And denial is a way to escape from ourselves. Which is why, once again, it's important when we tell ourselves, I know, to go like, okay, well, you know, I know, but I'm still open to knowing perhaps on a deeper level an openness to explore whatever it is that I have hidden so deep within myself that I may not even be aware of One of my favorite intentions for ayahuasca ceremonies and when you feel ready, go for it is take me to those places I have not allowed you to come to until now. show me what I have been unwilling to look at this far plant medicines have a wonderful wonderful gift for us modern people western people 
because they help us let go, even if temporarily, of our own protection mechanisms. They help us connect with those parts of ourselves we have tucked away. They open the door to the tightest locked doors of our being. Therein lies their power for us. That's what these foul tasting medicines are really, really good for. If you want to feel expansion of any kind, there are many, many other ways to do so. As far as I'm concerned, ayahuasca and San Pedro have more important work to do with us. And the work is to take us to those places we would rather not go to. I'm often fond of jokingly say that my clients would pay me a hundred times more if I would support them in taking them where they want to go rather than when they need to go. These are medicines. So medicines address our needs, not our desires. The emphasis, the letting go of our wish list of our feel good, warm and fuzzy hopes is an important part of surrendering our egos so that the medicine can touch us deeper and deeper. Not where we want to, where we need to be touched. medicine as far as I'm concerned and by the way everything I tell you is just my opinion if you find it useful great if not just dismiss it is about healing these are neither drugs so substances uh, that we engage in to escape from ourselves. And they're not medications. We all have some criticism or other about the current medical system, right? The current Western medicine approach to thing is first and foremost to make us feel good when we hurt. And we do this by suppressing symptoms, which actually makes true healing more challenging because symptoms are actually very important signals from ourselves to ourselves that there's something out of whack that is calling for our attention.
And because of this shifting of priorities, it seems that, you know, with the years, with modernity, our pain threshold keeps lowering. It's like, mm, where's, where's the fix? I don't want to feel physical pain, and I understand. I'm human too. But these is our very important messages. It's like, pay attention. And if we don't pay attention, the next round, the signal is going to be stronger and stronger and stronger until sometimes we end up in a hospital. Healing, as I understand it, is not a process by which we can simply continue doing the things that we've been doing all along, just as before. Healing is about change. It's a transformational process that is often more about simply our physical bodies. Our physical bodies are simply one of the many expressions of the multidimensional beings that we are. And all of these dimensions of our being are singing in harmony. One uh, is the reflection of the other. As much as we all crave change and transformation, we are equally scared of change. We are scared of change because we are afraid of the unknown. The mind fears more than anything else what it doesn't know, which is why it fears the future, which is why it creates roadways into an unknown, an unknown future to reassure itself. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Okay. I'm in control. Yes. That fear of the unknown is what creates our attachment to what we already know. To the point that we'd rather stay for instance, in a relationship that we know is not healthy for us, but that we're familiar with. Come and have a seat. Come on. There's a couple of chairs. I don't know about you, but, you know, I've stayed in relationships, in activities, in places, much longer than I knew were good for me. It was that, that trepidation of jumping into the unknown. Joseph Campbell was fond of sharing the story of a Native American ini initiation rite, whereby 
an elder would take a youth to a big boulder they were standing on top of this boulder and then in front of them there was another boulder with a gap in between and the elder would say jump the gap is always smaller than we fear fear is what creates this paralysis so it's important it's important to be aware of what is actually happening aware of how and the ways in which we let our fears um, paralyze us one of the wonderful wonderful qualities of the medicine of San Pedro even though San Pedro has a definite masculine energy it also has a sublime feminine quality because it helps us feel it helps us connect with our emotions by repressing our emotions we're actually cutting ourselves from a very important source of wisdom of intuition but also by repressing our emotions we drive them deeper into our being to the point that we act in ways that are not often beneficial to us that we are that are often euromatic unconscious and that are often paralyzing so the work the work with plant medicines by lifting the repressive veil of the ego and the mind helps us get to know ourselves more they help us explore discover our own inner landscape in that process oftentimes and that's why they call them medicines what we are faced with is all those things that we have repressed all the things that we did not want to look at which is why when we engage with them we are full of fear it's like oh my god the first time I drank ayahuasca I knew I wasn't scared of the medicine that was clear I was like shit what is she going to reveal to me that I have hidden from myself and others so skillfully for so long ouch with the years a very very important shift happened for me one day I don't remember exactly how I was like, Javier, 
you're going to be with you for a really long time. Stop being afraid of yourself. Whoever you may be is you. Stop being afraid of yourself. And in that moment, by consciously deciding, okay, I'm going to drop this attitude with myself. By dropping the fear and this fearful attitude, I could begin to be in a loving relationship with myself. Loving as in accepting, embracing, supporting. It's been one of the deepest shifts in my life and it was just a shift in attitude. And I often find myself, you know, with my clients, you know, and they're scared. Something comes up, I'm like, you know, whatever it is, it's just you. When we drop this this uh, the word escapes me but this fear of who we are <coughs> and be more in acceptance of all that we may be, we can not only embrace our shadow, and embracing our shadow quickly transforms it into light. It is simply our embracing our acceptance of parts of ourselves. We don't have to go through bizarre rituals to transmute our shadow. It is our hearts, our embracing, our love and acceptance that simply transmutes what we had labeled as shadow into light. We're simply integrating into our being. We are coming into a place of wholeness. But also, we can embrace our light, our gifts. I titled my book on San Pedro, Opening the Pathways of the Heart. San Pedro was so called by the Spanish who first arrived in South America and drank it because they were Catholics and some of them were lucky enough that upon drinking it they had an experience of going to heaven and who stands at the gates of the Catholic heaven is Saint Peter this same medicine was called in pre-Columbian times with different names but whose meaning was door. San Pedro 
is a door opener. San Pedro opens, supports us, rather, in opening those doors within ourselves that have been long shut. It opens the doors to a greater awareness of our surrounding, which is why it's very, very important that we engage with this medicine in an environment that we know is welcoming, that we know will support beneficially our experience. It opens the doors to heavenly, otherworldly energies. But most importantly, the invitation the support is into opening our own hearts. San Pedro, as far as I'm concerned, is primarily a very powerful heart opener. Under its effects, we're better able to connect with ourselves and with our world through our hearts rather than our minds. And by supporting us in opening our hearts, this medicine helps us unlock our most powerful medicine, which is the love that's in our hearts. We don't need, even though they're fine and cute, crystals and incense and esoteric practices. under the effects of San Pedro, the medicine supports us in opening our hearts so that we are healing ourselves. We are healing ourselves by embracing ourselves. We are healing ourselves by extending forgiveness to ourselves and to others. That's the real medicine. Ultimately, San Pedro reflects back to us our own medicine and teaches us that we are our own best medicine and our own wisest doctors. So that we don't have to look outside ourselves nor for a leader nor for a healer. It's very powerful. very powerful, very beautiful, very generous of this expression of the same divine energy that we are made of, of these plants, to mirror back to us our own medicine our own shadows, but also our own divinity.
it is also you know I, I speak I speak of all this simply from what I have experienced in my own skin and what I have witnessed in others This is a very powerful process. And actually, in our, in our wounds, in our pain, right there in the middle of it, right there very very on the other side of what we believe is unbearable pain and suffering lie the seeds of our own liberation and if we are willing if we have the courage and the patience and the humility to jump into that fire and stay in that fire long enough when that fire eventually dies down in those ashes we're going to find the jewel that we are the treasures that we've been going all around the world across lifetimes looking for i'm fond of saying that the more challenging plant medicine ceremonies are also the most rewarding in the moment it sucks it's just like no 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 like will I ever even make through this night And when the storm is over, we can look back and go like, wow, that was the most rewarding as well as hellish night of my life. Thank you for putting me through the grinder and not let me escape as I'm fond of doing and that is why whenever I speak with my clients before each ceremony I always help them focus on an intention that it's as challenging as I feel they can take. Because I know that's where the juice is, that's where the treasures are, that's where these medicines can really help us make quantum leaps. And I understand that, you know, after a few ceremonies, somebody may go like, well, you know, maybe tonight I just want to take it easy. And actually, someone in the last retreat said, well, you know, I was more shooting for like a warm, fuzzy feeling for tonight. Uh-uh. No. No, it's out of the question. 
you want a warm fuzzy feeling you go to the movies <laughs> you smoke a joint whatever yeah no I will not waste this precious medicine and my time and your time with this kind of intentions the popularity of these medicines also turn into a matter of sustainability these plants are always always happy to support us in our own healing and awakening process with utmost generosity provided we go to them with respect and humility provided we follow the rules of the house but it takes years for these plants to grow and they literally give their lives for us they give their lives for us in the same way that milk does not come from whole foods ayahuasca does not come from UPS these are life entities just like ourselves which is why I invite all of you to show up each time you drink these medicines with a strong intention with the awareness that you are engaging with medicines not drugs not fluff, not entertainment, but medicines. And these are sacred medicines. Sacred meaning that they ask of us to show up as adults. This is not kids' play it never was and it will never be and whenever we engage with them in an attitude that is less than so what we actually do is we lessen the power of these medicines we belittle them Luckily for us, these grandfathers and grandmothers eventually show us the erroneousness of our attitude and they slap us, sometimes real hard, just to teach, just to remind us, just to put us in our place. So we don't have to even be too self-conscious about it. Eventually we will be put in our place. I've been working, leading ceremonies for the last 11 years. The more I engage in this process, the more respectful I have become. Because the more I engage in this process, the more apparent their power has become to me. And she's so like, oh, okay, gloves. <laughs> the more respectful is also that the more disciplined I have become with myself as well as with my clients about adhering to the rules of the house which 
often imply very simple dietary and behavioral restrictions that I'm fond of keeping to a minimum because if it gets too complicated then we just throw the whole thing away but those very simple rules are not subject to discussion without exception and by adhering to those preparatory rules as well as during and after what we do is we create a strong container and we are also showing demonstrating to the medicine and to the universe that we are in the right place that we are aware of what we are engaging with that we're not taking it lightly and that respect towards the medicine and towards the process is always rewarded very sweetly is rewarded very sweetly because no matter what happens when the container is strong we can trust that no matter how challenging disturbing the experience may have been it's going to be a healing experience rather than a traumatic one there's enough trauma in this world we don't need to add anymore to the world when the container is strong even the most painful experience turns into a healing and meaningful one wonderful uh, thank you all for being here thank you for your attention thank you for your support um, and um, and thank you <laughs>